Welcome home. This is Audio EXP for the 18th of February 2023. And the title of this episode is Can Gamers Spell Turkey? Random Rambling Press is in the spotlight this month, as voted for by patrons. And I'm kind of in touch with Random, with swap messages on Twitter, but most have been, have you got my email yet? Followed by, no. Now, as regular listeners will know, it's okay if I can't get through this bottleneck, as I can always write something up without a Q&A. But, despite this monthly challenge, I do feel the Q&A is better. Another challenge has been the RPG news summary, which is routinely itemised. It's been taking me hours to pull together, and I keep on missing the midnight deadline. Well, kind of. This week, the newsletter went live before midnight, but without the Kickstarter bullets. Those were added later. It's partly ZineQuest's fault. It's been the hottest Kickstarter week since I started tracking, and I should write that up later. It's also because the OGL drama is still casting shadows, and we'll talk about that later. I thought, though, we'd start with the top 10. I get data from the streaming search engine Just Watch which put together the top 10 video game to movie adaptations based on popularity. So we're not talking about review scores here, but what people actually search to watch. And number 10, there's a rampage, you know, that giant gorilla epic. In nine, Warcraft, which was so close, but so far. In eight, Mortal Kombat, which was so safe, I barely remember it. And in seven, Prince of Persia, and I'm, I'm not sure I do remember it, although I remember the game. Number six is Tomb Raider, and I assume the first one. In position five, Sonic 2, and I'm still to watch that. Question, should I? Four is Resident Evil, and you won't be surprised to know the sequel don't make the list. In position three, Detective Pikachu, which is a strong candidate. In number two, Sonic the Hedgehog. And you have to thank the crunch put in by the FX team there. And in number one, the best, or at least the most popular, video game to movie adaptation is Uncharted. Now that was a good movie, but are you surprised to see it in number one? So, what's notable and missing? Monster Hunter or Assassin's Creed, I guess? Now, let's talk about Hasbro's earnings call. And the time the company's shareholders got to ask some questions. The Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, asked about the OGL. I like to think the analyst was a gamer, but they'd probably just done their homework and noticed all the blast waves. The bank wanted to know if Hasbro expected to see a financial impact in Q1, and the answer seems to be no. Wizards of Coast said they had had some cancellations of D&D Beyond, but they played it down. They also suggested they had been in contact with people who had walked away, and have been persuading them to return. Have you cancelled and had Wizards of the Coast reach out to lure you back? If so, let me know. Now it's hard to tell whether the next piece of news is OGL related or just something brewing for a while. Now Wizards had wanted to change the OGL to lock out digital stuff beyond DM's Guild style PDS, but that was quickly written back. As I've speculated previously, if they had led with keeping NFTs out, then I suspect they would have been able to wield the scalpel. In either case, Demiplane has announced the 5e Nexus. That's the 5e D&D users, but the 5e Nexus is set up to help indies with games that use 5e. It's a brilliant catch-all, but we're yet to see whether publishers targeted by the toolkit have the capacity to add to it. A successful result for the 5e Nexus is that it becomes a one-stop shop for indie publishers and a sum of the parts success for gamers. If loads of publishers use it, then the 5e Nexus gets better and better. However, if not enough, whatever that critical mass needs to be opt-in, then it's all a bit pointless. The other thought here is that while VTTs like Fantasy Grounds and Roll20 stayed relatively quiet during the OGL drama, Demiplane did not, and there are ex watsy allies involved here, like Adam Bradford who founded D&D Beyond and then who later moved to Demiplane. Demiplane 
were critical of Watsi during the backlash. This week also saw Free League Publishing share their first new license in response to the OGL and start a conversation about it. The first part of Cobalt Press's Black Flag also went live. Lineage and Heritage is free to download and, as ever, you will find the links in the transcript which you can get to you from the show notes. I've seen mixed reactions, mainly because some people like the current background system and others have been taught by their tribe to object to the word lineage. I started to think of projects like Black Flag and Orc as D&D, not D&D, because they're trying to be as close to the 5e revolution as possible without being D&D bound. This next story, though, is Pathfinder, not Pathfinder. Jason Bullen is the director of game design at Plasio and created Pathfinder. However, he also has a side gig at Minotaur Games, and it's Minotaur Games who are kickstarting Hope Finder. If all that sounds sunny, hold your horses, as Hope Finder is a zombie apocalypse. I guess the survivors are really keen to find some hope. Hope Finder is a relatively low key entry into Kickstarter, but it's thrashed its humble campaign goal and has a few hundred backers. Let's do freebies and continue with the not 5e theme. There's the elemental system for one, and Guildor Games have been promoting it through a series of generous free downloads. Next in the Legends of Gildor are Children of the Black Monolith. That's a swords and sorcery, 30 pages, download with six pre-gen characters. Supporting the Kickstarter, Space Otter Publishing has released a free quick start for Deck Carnage. In this quirky game, PCs aren't the heroes. There are the also runs set out to raid between epic battles. In bundles, and running to about the 6th of March, there's the One Ring Starter Collection on the bundle of holding. You don't get the core rules here, but you do get both the starter set and the solo rules, aka Strider Mode. Finishing earlier, around March the 1st, there's Godbound, returning from 2020, and a chance to play in a dying world with demigods. Lastly, AAW, Jonathan G. Nelson, and dozens of other RPG publishers have put together Aid for Turkey. You can find that on DriveThruRPG, but it's hard to search for, as this spelt Turkey, T-U-K-I-Y-E. And that's probably the local and wise way to do it. But I worry it makes the bundle hard to find. Also, normally I'm glad at the ease at which Geek Natives Tech turns links into affiliate code so I can try and reduce the cost of running the site. That's not the case in charity deals like this. And I found it easier simply to tally up any revenue I earn off the charity effort and donate it directly myself. So, let's finish here. Don't stay up to the witching hour writing RPG newsletters and keep safe.